Okay, we are live. Uh, thank you for being here. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks to the Guild for having me do this. Um, I'm so super excited to be here. Uh, my name is Joel Schwartz, and I'm a session guitarist and producer living in Toronto. Uh, I've worked with singer-songwriters and composers for many years, and for the last several years, much of that work has been conducted remotely. So that's what this workshop is on. It's about working remotely. Um, I will say before we start that uh, I, I haven't given a lot of presentations. This is really my first kind of online seminar, if you will. So please forgive uh, any fumbles and, you know, I'm a session guitar player. I'm not used to the limelight. I'm usually playing behind a singer-songwriter or whatever it is. So here it goes. Um, yeah, and if it looks like I'm reading at any point, it's because I am. <laughs> okay, so let's jump right into it. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to talk about today. So we'll give you just a little bit of uh, background information on me. Um, we'll go into the pre-recording, which is like all the stuff you need to talk about before actually starting a uh, recording, before starting a session. Um, and then we'll go to recording and we'll look at some technical details here. Um, oops. But um, the main thing here is that we have a, a composition from Guild member Matt We Met. So we're going to look through that and actually do like a live session here in the studio, which is awesome. Um, it's amazing we have the technology to do that. And you'll see what the process is really like from my end. Um, and then we're going to look at delivery, which is like, we'll talk a little bit about file management, revisions, and how I'm sending the files. So hopefully all this stuff will be super useful for you guys. Um, at the end, we're going to leave some time for questions, but if you don't mind, like save your questions to the very end um, and we'll get, we'll get to them during the Q&A time. Um, one final bit of housekeeping is I'm going to be sending, um, or if you want, you can have a PDF of kind of everything I'm talking about. So don't feel like um, you have to take furious notes. Um, at the end, I'll, show, I'll, I'll give you a link for a PDF that has like tons of links and uh, notes on all this stuff. Okay, so, so I'm right now I'm streaming from a studio that I built in 2015, but this is not where I got started with remote work. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but this is, uh, I'm, I have a setup here in a wine cellar. This is, I was on tour with a band named uh, Birds of Chicago. So this is my setup in a wine cellar in a vineyard somewhere in California. It was very cold. I was recording guitar parts for this uh, first season of Anne with an E for guild composers uh, Ari Posner and Amin Bhatia. So here's that same tour. This is a closet. You know, it's about as bad of a recording setup as you can imagine. Um, I don't even know what to say about that. This one, I guess, and you know, it's in a hotel room. It's, it's a little bit more sophisticated, but you know, I have a, a mic on my amp and my pedal board is there, but you can tell there's a, a Dixie cup holding up uh, a microphone. So it's not super sophisticated. So I, I managed to get some like great recordings out of that. Um, but as you can imagine, like the setup was unbelievable. Like I'm, I'm worried about being too loud or other people being too loud. I'm having to do these things um, after gigs. So sometimes these sessions wouldn't start until uh, like, you know, 12 at night and I'd be going till three for deliverables that were due like the next day or soon after because the turnaround time on that particular show was so fast and, and it often is. That's uh, the world we occupy. So I finally built a, a studio in Toronto for, for collaborating with people. And that's where I'm streaming uh, from today. Um, you know, there's a range of ways to build a studio, as you guys all know, I'm sure. But, you know, this studio is particularly built for, like, guitar. It's for the stuff I do. It's for guitar. It's for um, all the fretted instruments I play, like um, acoustic instruments, mandolin, banjo, all that stuff. So all the microphones, all the preamps, it's all geared towards that. I'm also a producer, so I have great stuff for vocals too, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the purpose of the studio. 
Um, so since building this, I've played on many, many tracks and albums and cues for artists and uh, composers and, you know, I, I love the work because I think it's so efficient and, uh, you know, it sounds so great. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you more about that. Um, my uh, goal for remote recording is to make like really great art that connects. I want, it to, I want it to connect with you, the composer, and ultimately with the story and the audience. Now that's what we're doing. Um, for me, remote recording has opened up creative opportunities and ways of working that are more satisfying and valuable than I could have imagined. You know, I think it's um, really resource efficient because you guys can be working on other stuff while I'm working on my guitar parts. It gives me like ton of control over the sound. So, you know, I can like take some time to record a particular resonator guitar part the way that it really suits the cue or the song. Um, and, you know, that creativity leads to better albums and better scores. And ultimately, um, you know, that's really in the best interest of composers and the audience. So um, I've really tried to hone a streamlined process that's like really easy and high value for my clients, which are like singer songwriters and composers primarily. Because I figure like the less energy we spend or the less energy yeah, I spend, we spend on figuring out like details of workflow, uh, the more time we have for creative execution. And that's like what we want to be doing. So let's uh, look at uh, some pre-recording stuff. Um, we're going to look at for pre-recording the goal, establishing a rapport, vision, logistical stuff, and payment. So for the goal, um, this is really your chance in, in, in before you get started and before you get started with the session to um, get all the information that you need so the process runs smoothly. Um, here we're setting expectations uh, about, about the project and the parameters and going over all the details that were really pertinent to it. So we're, we're trying to just get everything out of the way so uh, you know, it can just be run smoothly and be a success. One of the things I think like really helps with that, especially if you're working online a lot, is um, you know, connect on the phone. That's, like, that's critical, I think, because um, you know, we uh, we, we're connecting using computers, but that doesn't mean we have to treat each other like computers. Um, soon after the first email goes out, I think it's important to get on the phone and, you know, even if it's a 10 minute phone call, just to really connect with, with the other artist on the other end. We're, we're all making art. So I think that's really worthwhile uh, to get things running smoothly. Uh, the next thing that's really important to hear before you start recording is a little bit about the creative vision. So. You, you need to communicate uh, what the vision is, like what the context for, for this music is. It's, uh, it, often composer, composers will send me like picture along with uh, the cues and I find that really useful because it gives me a visual representation of what we're doing. I'm seeing what you're seeing. Um, you know, a conversation about sounds like instruments and kind of even mood type conversations about what you're hearing will be like really important and like I can help in that dialogue of course so you don't have to know everything about guitars and amps and pedals and stuff like that but talking about the mood and sounds is really useful also if if it exists like some kind of examples of other scores or other cues you know the goal here is to establish a trusting musical friendship so that's that's creative vision so let's look at uh, some logistical things real quick um, if it's not somebody you've uh, worked f with before, uh, just, you know, be explicit that you're going to be recording in, for example, 4824. Um, sometimes I'll receive files in 441. That's fine. I think ultimately most film is going to be converted to 48, so might as well just be working in that for the whole process. Um, you know, and the scheduling stuff is always a, is always a thing. Um, leave time for revisions in remote recording. That's going to be important. If you can't be here for the session, 
uh, of course that's okay, like um, that's what remote co recording is, but we have to leave some time in case there's some revisions, so consider that. Um, yeah, and some tools as far as scheduling, like what I find really works well is, and I'll, I'll make some notes of this in the PDF, is like Calendly, if you've heard of that, it's great. Doodle polls, if you have a kind of a group of people, and Google, in, uh, Google Calendar invites. I find those apps super helpful, especially if there's people working in like uh, multiple time zones. You know, nobody has to do the math, so. Okay, payment, super important. Um, before you start recording, before you start your sessions, have this stuff cleared out. Um, agree on the amount of money, who will pay it? Like, is it gonna be from the production company? Am I gonna get it from them? Or am I gonna get it from the composer? That's important. When is it going to be paid uh, and how it will be paid, uh, e-transfer, PayPal, etc. So all that should happen like before the work starts. All of this is really worth keeping in mind, I think. Okay, so we are actually ready to move on to an example here. This, um, we have something sent from uh, uh, Matt we met he he was the first one to submit something so we're gonna use his he, he wrote a lovely lovely tune for us um, and it's really some like an example of what I love to receive from composers actually um, so Matt uh, sent me four individual tracks um, and what's great about that is I can mute parts and play over them so you can see he's uh, he sent me a full mix which is always really useful because I can hear it, you know, how Matt's hearing it. Um, he's got the melody here, chords, and the drum beat. So I can, you know, I can go through these and mute them. That's awesome. Uh, the one thing he's done, too, that's important to note is everything's been ex exported from zero. So, you know, I have him started on bar, bar three here, but I'll start recording at bar three, and you know, when I uh, render it, all our stuff is going to line up at the end so you know that's really important there's no like uh, question about how it's going to line up um yeah so matt and i had some conversations about some directions so uh when he submitted the composition he wrote some directions there and we also had a phone call as a follow-up so i have a good idea of what he's going for um, we've gone through the pre-production process all online or by phone so I really understand Matt's vision you know I understand the technical requirements um, and I get the budget in this case pro bono okay so let's just uh, you know okay so I'm gonna play this tune for you um, and then shortly after we're gonna hear from Matt we'll bring him in uh, via zoom and um, and we'll have a conversation, there's Matt there. Uh, we'll have a conversation with uh, Matt after. So here's Matt's tune. It's called, uh, what is it? Song for Joel and by Matt We Met. Here we go. Thank you. I mean, it wrote for you, you know, it's better be good. Yeah, I'm here as well. Yeah.
Yeah. So, so Matt, it would be great to hear a little bit about your uh, about your about your tune. I know you already had a conversation with uh, with Joel, but just can you tell us a bit about um, about, yeah. about your tune? Uh, I wrote. I wanted. It's basically like in my mind, I wanted '60s French pop mixed with Bill Fr- Bill Frizzell's Nashville album. <laughs> We all know those. And uh, yeah, I mean, I know Joel plays a guitar really well, so I'm just excited to see what happens. Amazing. Well, and, and okay. Joel, was there more to the conversation uh, beyond that in terms of when he just said Bill Frizzell, you knew exactly what he meant and that was the end of that? Or did, did you have to go into it anymore? You know, like, I mean, that's a pretty ideal reference. So like I immediately kind of have a good idea of what he's talking about. And we, we, we did talk about a few kind of specific kind of moods, like he was looking for something kind of dreamy, like we hear that in this piece, you know. Um, so yeah, we, 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 we talked about art and feelings a little bit, for sure. You know, that's, that's part of it, for sure. So um, yeah, that's, uh, I, that, that, that kind of emotional part of the conversation it's sometimes hard to convey in email right so that's you know going back that's the point that's the important point of the conversation you let the artist you let the composer just kind of like talk a little bit tell tell me about what this is all about so um with uh without further ado we can record some guitar if we want great does that sound good yeah okay so i'm gonna switch over to the daw here um, so we'll, uh, the way I usually approach this stuff is, um, I like to start with kind of like the rhythmic bass. Um, it, Matt's got the drums there and there's the chord part here. He's got piano, um, which are static and great. But I think like, um, just hearing what Matt has said, talking about Bill Frizzell, talking about that Nashville album and all that, I think like one thing that could be great with this particular part is just adding a little bit of motion on the guitar part, um, specifically on the acoustic guitar. So I think like, let's start with that as a baseline and that will kind of inform some other stuff that we'll do. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to guitar land over here and switch things. Okay, so we're going to try this guitar part as an idea. Matt hasn't heard any of this stuff. Great, so I think that will provide like just a little bit of a rhythmic base for this and for what we kind of do next. Um, Matt and I also talked about having something uh, a little bit dreamy. So um, to accompany these chords that he's done here, I think like having something kind of warbly and and sustained, like he's got these sustained chords. so. Uh, but having like a little bit of delay, a little bit of warble. Let me let me grab an electric guitar here, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, 
Okay, okay so, so we'll, we'll use, use some pedals, pedals for this part. Um, I have some reverb, some overdrive, some delay, and some tremolo. Kind of a dreamy part, so let me, um, let's try this. Okay, cool. Um, so that sounds kind of dreamy, right? Um, let's take that out of record. And so when I think of Bill Frizzell and that Nashville album, one of the main voices on that is um, is Jerry Douglas on uh, on Resonator. So let's try a, a little bit of Resonator guitar on this too. So for anybody who doesn't know, oh, I got I got to put it into record. Sorry guys, one sec. Okay. So for anyone who doesn't know, this is a resonator guitar. It's open tuned and played with a slide, really like a vocal and expressive instrument. So I think that'll be cool for the melody. Let's try. Okay, great. So I made, you know, I did a, took some liberties on the melody a little bit there. Hopefully Matt doesn't mind. And if he does, we'll have a revision process and we talk about it. Um, I'll do one more part here because uh, film composers love kind of ambient stuff. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to mess around on electric guitar. Just try to find some kind of cool colors just this will this would be something like almost I would just like throw out to Matt as kind of an idea and he could say yeah yeah let's do more of that or no that's not the right night and right thing for this so I'll bring you over to the pedal board, board here, here. So, so I'm, I'm gonna, gonna put some put, put some, some heavy kind of distortion on this a lot, lot of reverb some, some delay, delay a lot of delay, delay and a, a Leslie, Leslie effect, effect. Yeah. and we'll, we'll just, just kind of do, do some, some I don't know, some kind of guitar, some slide 
ambient kind of stuff, try some different sounds here. Um, okay, so let's try this. Great, okay, so that's that. Let me uh, play this all for you so you can hear it all together. This is Matt Wiemet's Song for Joel. So there you go. What a beautiful song. It's like constantly in my head and I feel like um, I, I feel like Matt crushed on that. And I, I, like I could I could play on that all day is I could imagine mandolin parts and all different things. But in order to keep this moving, I hopefully you kind of get get the idea of how I approach it. Um, OK, so like the next part of this, if everything is recorded, uh, we're on to delivery. Um, so for most projects, my uh, mix uh, workflow my, or my delivery workflow happens in kind of three sections. There's the mix delivery, so uh, what, what you heard right there. Um, there's a section on revisions and the final delivery. So let me just go into those each really brief, briefly. Um, for mix delivery, what I think is really important, especially in online collaboration, is... Um, uh, the project versioning. So the way I do it, and I'll tell you about this if it's helpful for you, um, I start with 1.0. So Song for Joel, it's going, it's, as soon as I get that, I save it as 1.0. And if I make big changes, it goes 1.1, 1.2. And then if Matt wants some revisions, I'll do it 1.3, 1.4, keep going on that. If he has a substantial change, I do go to 2.0, and that goes 2.1. If there's like, okay, no, none of those instruments work. It, it's not Bill Frizzell. I want, you know, whatever it is. And we try another direction. But suffice it to say, the, uh, the, the project versioning is, it just makes it really clear and easy. Um, along with that, like file naming, like if we um, flip back to the DAW here, like you'll see I've named things like acoustic guitar, electric guitar, resonator. You know, I, I, it's not particularly useful for Matt to receive that. Um, I don't think, like, it requires him to be kind of organized on his end. And my goal is to make this as easy as possible. So I will write um, acoustic guitar, song for Joel. Like, this is the file name. Acoustic guitar, song for Joel, and, um, and then my name at the end. Um, and that just makes it really easy if anything ever gets mixed up. Um, so I recommend that. So... 
the first thing I do is rather than sending my, uh, Matt all these files, I'd send him a mix um, of this so he can just really easily hear it. And I use some software called, I just want to show you this, it's called File Pass. And this is kind of like SoundCloud if you've ever used it. Like, um, so this is the, uh, this is the, the song that we just recorded. And so Matt can play that like in full resolution, like it, I can upload a WAV file, it plays back as a WAV file with no quality loss, which is nice. Um, I can choose to let him download it or not. But the main thing what this is useful for is for communications about, communication about like if he has revisions, um, he can just navigate to the part where he hears it say, okay, more resonator guitar. And he's, puts that in and then it's time stamped and then we're all on the same page like you wouldn't believe how many emails this saves because sometimes people have it at different points in their DAW so something like this really makes the revision process a lot easier um, yeah so uh, again please make sure to leave time for revisions because that's something that can really like you know, you, do, you don't want to be rushed in that point. It's really worth having, having some time left for, for revisions. Um, and then if everything works, then, and it works for Matt, then I send it all via, like the individual files via Google Drive. Um, yeah, okay. So guys, that is that. That is my workshop on remote recording. Thank you so much for, for, for listening and for watching. Um, thank you to the Guild and Charlie for having me here. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Gina Anika and Ali Fiola. They also sent compositions, but you know, with the q and I didn't think we'd have time to get to everything, but thank you guys for sending me your beautiful songs. Um, so for all of you, please um, feel free to get in touch with me if you have any questions I was not able to address. You know, I would love to hear from you. Here's my... Uh, my info. Um, please don't get. Uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch if you have a project you want to talk about. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about is rate. Uh, I think like there's so many factors with this, including like the experience of the musicians you might be hiring, how many instruments. It really does depend. But feel free to reach out, and I, I can help navigate whatever whatever situation. Um, if you want to get the PDF with notes uh, on, on what I've kind of talked about today, it'll be here. You can just uh, download it from there. And yeah, that's it. So uh, I'd love to open up for any questions now. Um, maybe I'll bring Charlie back here and, and he can uh, help marshal some of the questions. Sure, if you want to post any of your questions in the uh, Facebook chat, uh, I'll pass them on to Joel. I also wanted to ask if there was any other comments from Matt, if, if, uh, if you wanted to share any of your thoughts. I thought, I thought uh, Joel did a beautiful job. Yeah, no, Joel, that was really super duper great. You're uh, super duper good at that. <laughs> I just wish you would mute the thing, me. Just get rid of me. And <laughs> I don't know. What? Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, thank you for sending that, though. That's great. Cool, bud. Oh, uh, we did have we did have one question earlier, Joel. Uh, is that an original clon? That was a a, a question that uh, somebody asked early on. Uh, no, no, that's uh, what is that? That's by um, of course, who's, who's the guitar player in, in the in the bunch? Who that's by that? uh, Pelican Noise Works. It's a Pelator. I didn't use that. It's like a real grungy, uh, real grungy fuzz. And uh, Joel, here's another question from Amin Batia. How much or how little notation uh, do you need? That, uh, he um, says, you uh, know, that's such a good question. Yeah, I'm so glad you, answer, you asked that. Um, this really depends. Like, um, it's going to depend on the music. For me personally, so I can answer that from, from, from me. But um, it's really going to depend on who you're working, working with, what the instrumentalist, like if it's a violin, a piano, you know, all that stuff's really going to depend. For me, like a goal uh, is to work with composers and establish kind of a trust where they know that I can kind of do my thing and they can trust me to do that. Sometimes that takes a while. I, I, like having a bunch of uh, notation can be great, but like I find fretted instruments, electric guitar and all this stuff, it's like notoriously hard to write for. 
Um, you know, I find it's better, unless it's something very specific, like if there's a melody you want me to play, absolutely send me the notation. But, um, you know, I find it's, it's um, better to talk in kind of an emotional way, talk about the mood and, and, and we'll, we'll try to establish a, a trusting relationship. With so that. like a, even even sometimes a chord chart is uh, would be fine as well. Absolutely, yeah. Like uh, it really again, it really depends on the style and what it is. But you know, my job is to be an expert at all this stuff. So I don't expect you, like it, you know, I don't expect you to know everything about guitars and mandolins and resonator and stuff. But um, we can kind of navigate that through that together. Like, and I think that's the great thing about. Um, collaborating an online remote collaboration as you yeah joel here's a question from uh amanda okay uh is it usually just an upfront fee or do you keep performance royalties on film and tv tracks the only time there's been any royalties involved have been when i've like done some original work um and i, I understand like the the line the, there's blurred lines uh always between um you know, if I'm if I'm recording for a, an artist, I'm I'm making up riffs. There is a degree of writing, but that that's not the way the system works, right? Like, um, I'm not really producing original content in the same way as this original songwriter. I'm there to play guitar parts and have that come up. But if there have been times when I've been asked, "Can you do like I haven't been the composer?" but can you do like an arrangement of this? So there is some fee for that. I don't know how, I think it's, it was very little, but um, I did, I was remunerated for that, uh, for arrangement, but typically no. Okay, any, any other uh, questions you want me to pass on to Joel at this point? I will say that uh, that software, uh, what was it called, File Pass? Yeah. It, I, I haven't used that one uh, specifically, but uh, being able to pinpoint the comments on the um, on the timeline exactly where they're needed does does save a huge amount of time. I've used uh, Frame.io, which oh, you can yeah. actually use with video, but same 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 purpose to have right. that point in the timeline. You know, there's there's a lot of software things, and there's a lot of stuff that's going to change. Obviously, you know, we're we're all. We're not talking about the elephant in the room, but there's this way of collaborating is is um, it's obviously going to become more common, and the the demands on um, kind of remote collaboration and more kind of real time or as closer to real time is is going to be more of a reality. However, that being said, I find like the non real time thing is one of the things that's really great about remote collaboration because I have a very minimal setup here, like today, like with the um, you know, usually I would mic the acoustic guitar, for example, with at, at least two mics and there'd be like a stereo kind of setup. Um, I, ha I haven't done any of that just for kind of ease of the stream, but like it really, like having some time allows for a little bit of consideration, a little bit of thought, allows me to experiment without being quite so much on the hot seat. Another question asked from uh, Simon. He said, uh, hey, Joel, did you reach out to composers uh you work with or did they find you um so yeah that's a great question i uh i've done a bit of both the way it started for me was um i think my first like real musical collaboration of real significance was with um in terms of a composer was with ari posner he saw me performing and he just kind of felt like my style lend itself to film which you know was a huge compliment because for me, like, I try to be like in, in when I'm playing with singer songwriters or whatever it is, I try to be kind of like, I think about painting the relationship between painting and color and music. And, um, yeah, like I, I love, I love, I love that, that he, he kind of saw that in me. And so, uh, he, he sought me out, but, um, I found for me, it's like, it's a good home for me. I, I kind of like, I get what composers are. I've done composing myself. I get what they're, they're, they're needing. Like often it's very, very minimal. Like, you know, when I was doing that drone thing on the guitar, like uh, ostensibly, like that could be the only thing that Matt would actually want to use potentially of all the things you never know, or maybe he mutes everything and just keeps that drone, you know? So I know like the particular, 
I think I'm sensitive to the particular needs of composers. Um, and it's similar to backing up like a songwriter. You're, you, our job is to support and kind of stay out of the way um, and, and um, you know, help the narrative along, help the story. Yeah. Uh, there was another post. People were talking about a, um, uh, a database. Um, and I think there's been a few uh, Facebook conversations going around about different uh, databases of uh, musicians that do this type of thing. I've seen some for a... Uh, um, an American, a lot of American um, uh, musicians that are available for being hired for remote collaboration, but I don't think we've seen a Canadian list put together at this point. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, there's two things kind of immediately after the COVID thing. One was like a database, uh, a spreadsheet on uh, from the, it's like a New York, that might be what, uh, what they're referring to. Like there's a New York kind of Google doc that was going around that was like, uh, musicians who can uh, who can collaborate uh, remotely in New York. So I actually signed up for that. So why not? Doesn't matter what city you're in. Yeah, um, it doesn't really matter where you are, right? Yeah. So uh, I think something like that existing would be great. Um, w you know, th we're gonna we're gonna need to find ways to connect to each other if we're if we're gonna work like this more. And um, yeah, so that's a good that's a great idea. Mm. All right, I think th I think that really covers all the uh, everything we wanted to to talk about. If they have any other questions, um, feel free to get in contact with Joel. But once again, thank you to uh, Matt and thank you yeah. to Joel and the other composers that submitted pieces. And um, hopefully, we can do more of these uh, types of events. If you have any other suggestions for um, online events, please uh, pass them on to me, and hopefully, we can do more of these. Thank you very much, Joel. Yeah, thanks so much for being here, guys. I really appreciate it. Well, like people would be clapping normally. But I think there's... <laughs> All right. Okay. I, I'm gonna. Uh, or I, yeah. Let's uh, let's wrap up the stream, and we'll um, uh, we'll see you on the next one. We'll do. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you.